Hi guys, Claudia Bullin here and today's video is about the general election uh, 2017, Britain, the UK. <laughs> so Theresa May uh, got in again, she got the most MPs, the most seats and therefore she is still in charge. However, it's not as simple as that because she has actually lost a lot of support. She's lost a lot of seats. So although she's won the election, her party has lost a lot of support and her government has become weaker. So it's a bit of a complicated one. Um, the whole election in general, the lead up in the election itself, itself was a bit of a shambles, to be honest. Um, and I've just got some opinions about it. So I want to talk about it. This is an opinion video, so um, you may not agree with me, that's absolutely fine. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments section. Only rules are, obviously, just be respectful to one another. We all have different opinions and it's important that we're able to express them in a respectful way. So, Jeremy Corbyn. I am a huge Jeremy Corbyn fan and I have been for a really long time. Um, when it was first suggested that he become leader of the Labour Party, I was right behind him all the way because I feel like he represents true socialism. I am someone who does not like uh, the Tony Blair sort of era of the Labour Party. New Labour for me felt too much like a sort of... It was like they were just conservatives, but not calling themselves conservatives. So they were sort of using the name of Labour and the left, but really their ideas were we're not really helping the most vulnerable in society. I, I'm, a, I'm a socialist um, and I believe in what Jeremy Corbyn believes in. So I'm really, really glad that the Labour Party seems to be going back to its socialist roots because surely that's the point. Um, I think especially when you've got such a right-wing Tory party at the moment, what you need is a strong socialist opposition. So I am so, so glad that we have Jeremy Corbyn and all those critics of Jeremy Corbyn are st sort of starting to eat their words a bit now. There were so many people in the Labour Party, and I'll tell you what, I'm so annoyed with these people from the Labour Party. <laughs> now, my opinion on this is, it's fine if you don't like Jeremy Corbyn and you would have preferred someone else as leader. I get that, and you have every right to express that as a Labour voter and a Labour supporter. I completely agree. I, I, I wouldn't want to silence those people. Their voices are important. But I think... Once it got to the point where Jeremy Corbyn had been elected, democratically elected leader of the Labour Party and the majority of people in the Labour Party had voted for him, I think that was probably the point when people in the Labour Party should have thought, right, OK, we're a democratic party, Jeremy Corbyn has been elected, we're going to stand by him. And also, of course, there's the option of leaving the Labour Party. So if there were people in the Labour Party that could not possibly bear to be part of it uh, when it had been dragged back to its, social, its original socialist roots, they could have left the party, which, again, is their choice. It's, it's absolutely fair enough. But I feel like it, there came a point. There came a point when Jeremy Corbyn became leader and it became apparent that, look, Theresa May's called this snap, sneaky election <laughs> in the interest of the people. I would have expected those Labour people to have got behind Jeremy Corbyn because it became a case of, look, Theresa May has called this election because she thinks she's going to get it. She thinks she's going to get a landslide majority for the Tories. The Labour Party should have banded together at that point, put aside their individual differences and said, look, it's about what we want to do for this country. Um, it's about helping the most vulnerable in society. We need to stick together. And I saw so much selfishness from people in the Labour Party. And again, it's I'm not saying it's selfish to not like Jeremy Corbyn. You've got every right. There are so many voices in the Labour Party that have not been fans of Jeremy Corbyn. And they have every right to say that. It's really important that we all have those opinions and we can all voice them. <laughs> I just feel like some people were so, so selfish because they decided that that they would rather throw Labour under the bus. Because basically, I, I really feel like if the Labour Party had got behind Jeremy Corbyn from, from, the, from when he was democratically elected as leader, I feel like Jeremy Corbyn could have won this election. Because look at what he did already. Look at what he managed to do with the youth vote. I believe, um, it wasn't it 72% of 18 to 24 year olds or something came out and voted this election. And so many of those people, they voted Labour, they voted for Corbyn because they believe in socialism, they believe in, in, in the power of, of change and a, a sort of empathetic politics and that things can change and that's really powerful. So this is what Jeremy Corbyn managed to achieve. Even with the media completely turning on him and people in his own party turning on him, trying to tear him apart, that's what he achieved. And I just think if he'd had a united Labour Party behind him, they could have won the whole thing. And it's so frustrating to me because these 
oh god, there, there are people, you probably, I'm not going to name names, but there have been people who really, in my opinion, should have thought, if they were really Labour supporters and they really care about the most vulnerable in society, then there should, there was a point when I think they should have thought, right, it's going to be Corbyn or May here, and even if I don't like Corbyn personally, and I would have preferred another leader, it's more important for those vulnerable people in society that we do not get another five years of the Tories. Therefore, I am going to back the Labour Party. But these people didn't do that, and it played into the Tories' hands, because that's exactly what Theresa May used. Her tagline, which she kept saying again and again and again, was strong and stable. Now, in reality, the Tories and their government is not remotely strong or stable, in my opinion. <laughs> But it's very easy for her to use that. It's so easy because you've got a Labour Party that's sort of eating itself. So it's so easy for her to point at the Labour Party and say, look, we're the strong and stable alternative. She used the term coalition of chaos. That, I think, again, is, is looking at, at the left eating itself, <laughs> looking at the Labour Party, the opposition, deciding to turn on each other instead of turning on the horrific policies of the Tories. She managed to use that. I think that's how she just got it. I think that's how she just managed it. And it makes me so annoyed. Um, there are lots of, of people from the Labour Party now eating their words. And I, I don't expect them to suddenly be, you know, like, oh, we loved Corbyn all along and we're just going to go along with it because he's popular. But I do think that, that they do have a lot to answer for. And I, I certainly think all those ridiculous people saying he's unelectable, it was a bit like the Emperor's New Clothes, really, wasn't it? Because he, obviously, it's, it's just ridiculous. <laughs> Why would you call someone unelectable? So they called him unelectable, and then he was elected leader of the Labour Party. So you'd think that would be when they'd stop with the unelectable thing. And then it was, oh no, 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 he, he might have he might be electable with the Labour Party, but the people won't won't support him. He won't be able to drum up support. Oh look, look at the turnout. Look at the We started out this election with we thought it was gonna be a Tory majority. Theresa May had she had the high ground here. We ended this election with a valid opposition, a powerful opposition. We had a hung parliament, that's huge. When you think about the fact that when Theresa May called this election, let's not kid ourselves, she called it because she thought it would be easy. She thought she could make a landslide here, she was gonna get loads of gains for the Conservative Party, and it was gonna help her negotiate a hard Brexit. That's what she thought it was in the bag. But the people didn't agree. So many people voted against her. We have such a strong opposition now. There is such a, a strong feeling of socialism, of, of sort of revolution in this country. There's, there's people who just aren't going to take the system as it is anymore. And it's fantastic. So to all those people who are now saying, oh, I got it wrong about Corbyn, I, I'm really... I'm really glad and appreciate the fact they're saying that, but I, I do hope that finally, finally now, people in the Labour Party will, will focus more on fighting the Tories and the policies they're trying to put through, which some of them are absolutely horrific. I hope they'll focus more on those than on trying to attack Jeremy Corbyn, because it just doesn't make any sense, it doesn't help anybody, and at this point it just kind of seems a little bit selfish. Right, next point in terms of the general election. So I remember when Theresa May uh, became Prime Minister, I remember um, lots of, of conservative women saying, oh, this is a feminist victory. Um, and lots of feminists were doing this. They were acting like, oh, yay, feminism, Theresa May's got in. And I remember at the time I made a video about this. I don't think a, a woman in power does not equal feminism. It's not necessarily a gain for feminism. Was Margaret Thatcher a gain for feminism? I think it's simply in the fact that <laughs> we had a female prime minister, okay, it, it could happen, the fact she showed it could happen. That is a sort of feminist victory. But in this, did she help other women? Did she use her platform to improve the lives of women and create gender equality? No, she didn't. Theresa May, they're like, oh, oh, look at us, the Conservatives. We're the party who's had two female prime ministers. Well, this female prime minister, Theresa May, is now making a deal with the DUP. So the DUP are the Democratic Unionist Party, and they're currently in charge of Northern Ireland. They are anti-abortion. Abortion is illegal in Northern Ireland at this point, so bear that in mind. Um, they don't believe in, in rights for LGBT people, they actively want to be able to discriminate against them. They're against same-sex marriage. They don't believe in, in climate change. They, they don't believe in, in science, they believe in creationism. These are the people that Theresa May has decided to make a deal with. So I don't want to hear anyone telling me she's a feminist icon when she's formed an alliance with the DUP. Also, David Cameron was in charge, the last Conservative Prime Minister, he was in charge when uh, gay marriage was legalised in the UK, which was fantastic. 
But again, I mean, I think part of the reason why it was legalised is that it was time. It was it was time in society. And I think that's because a lot of people on the left, let's be real, have been fighting for this for a really long time. Attitudes have gradually changed and we're fantastically at that point. But the fa I just don't like the fact that conservatives use that. Like, I, I don't want to hear anyone saying, oh, but the conservatives were in power when gay marriage happened. I mean, if it was down to the conservatives on their own, I, I can assure you we would not even have that yet. And also, they are now in bed with the DUP, who actually want to discriminate against the LGBT community. They're, they've been willing to throw us under the bus so they can stay in power. And it's disgusting. I don't want to hear that anymore. Now, some people, some anti-Corbyn critics, are taking the piss out of Jeremy Corbyn at the moment because on the, the night of the election, uh, it became clear it was a hung parliament. The Tories were ahead of Labour, but still, it was, it was pretty close and no one had expected that. Now, Jeremy Corbyn was quoted as saying that he was ready to form a government. Now, everyone took the piss. Well, I say everyone, but you, you know what people are like, the media are like. They love to get at Jeremy Corbyn because he's unconventional. Um, I, I think they feel very threatened by Jeremy Corbyn's honesty, to be honest. But a lot of people were laughing at him. Doesn't Jeremy Corbyn know he's lost the election? Of course Jeremy Corbyn knows that he lost the election. He's not saying he won the election. This is what drives me. I just don't understand this. I don't understand what they expect Jeremy Corbyn to do because he does it when he does everything right they still find something wrong. I don't know if these people understand how it works. So what happens in a in a hung in the event of a hung parliament is that it falls to Theresa May, whose party got the most seats, to try and form a government. So she goes to the Queen to see if she's allowed to form her government. Now, if she's unable to do that, then it falls to the next person with the, the highest amount of seats, so the opposition, it would have fall, it would have fallen to Labour, and it would have fallen to Jeremy Corbyn to try and see if he can create a government. That's just how it works. That's how our system works. So why people are were laughing at Jeremy Corbyn for this, I don't understand. Sometimes I think that that the man could do anything and people would laugh. He was literally going by the process that we have in our country. And yes, of course he's feeling happy and, and optimistic right now. I, I think most people on the left are. I mean, okay, we didn't win the election and yeah, it's bloody scary that the DUP and the Tories have got some sort of deal going on. But I do feel absolutely thrilled by the fact that so many people have come out and voted for socialism. That makes me feel amazing. The fact that we have this, this real opposition I feel like something's awoken in so many people. I mean, I've never seen young people this excited about politics. Almost everyone I know my age is, is really enthused by it. My brother, who's three years younger than me, him and all his friends, they're really enthused and they're educated and people put down young people. But I tell you what, my brother's generation, that generation coming up, they know their stuff. They read policy and they're not swayed by the tabloids. Theresa May knows that she does not have that majority she does not have the confidence of the people. She ha She knows she can't get away with passing any old law. The Tories can't get away with anything now because they're gonna be held to account. I think that's fantastic. I know it's not a win, um, but considering everyone assumed that the Tories were gonna make this a landslide, I think it is a great result. And um, I, am, I am pleased. Running up to this election and all the way through it, there was this really nasty, insidious way of putting Jeremy Corbyn down, and I really disagree with it. I am someone who thinks that if you have a problem with someone or something against someone, like a politician, then it's very important that you give your reasons why. Um, it's no good just saying, oh, so-and-so politician is a bad person, so-and-so politician is, is dangerous. You have to say why, otherwise it's, it's not fair, it's character assassination. So many people have gone on about how, oh, Jeremy Corbyn's dangerous, he, he, oh, he's dangerous for the country. If you had valid reasons for why you think Jeremy Corbyn's dangerous, then you have every right to say that, but so many people they didn't have anything to back that up. It was like the Emperor's New Clothes again. It was like, oh, if we can just get this idea into the public consensus that Jeremy Corbyn's somehow dangerous for people. But they don't back it up with anything. I mean, I obviously am, am against the Tories. I think the Tories are pretty dangerous, but that's not just... <laughs> That's not just out of nowhere. I think that the Tories are dangerous because, for example, the way they treat disabled people. Um, I think that the way they treat the most vulnerable in society is appalling. I think the fact that um, the 1% is let off, the 1% hardly really, they don't really pay their
fair share. There's people in this country in food banks. There's child poverty in this country, one of the richest countries in the world, while the people at the top are still able to avoid paying their fair share of taxes. Under Theresa May, LGBT asylum seekers had to film themselves actually in the act of sexual intercourse to prove they were LGBT so they could be granted asylum in our country. Women who are raped have to fill in a long form to prove that they were raped and that they're entitled to, to, to benefit for that. I, I just think it's immoral. I could go on forever about Tory policy, which I don't think is right, but I have reasons why I think the Tories are bad. I'm not just gonna... The audacity of some people to go out there and just say, oh, oh, so-and-so's bad, and then when you ask them why, it's like, oh, I can't tell you that, but trust me. No, no, sorry. On the plus side, UKIP seems to be dead, so um, I am really, really not a fan of UKIP. Um, so Paul Nuttall was the leader of UKIP for this election. He doesn't really have the power of Nigel Farage to, you know, whip up <laughs> the people the way Nigel Farage did. Um, yeah, UKIP's kind of been destroyed right now. They're in a very weak place. However, I mean, that's 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 good. But I think Nigel Farage is, is rising again. I feel like he's, he's raising his head above the parapet. He's, he's ready. I was watching the election coverage and, and I, I was forced to see Nigel Farage and, and hear his comments about how if he's wanted back, oh, I, I guess I'll, I guess I'll come back if they want me. Um, Nigel Farage does worry me because I think he's an intelligent man. I think he, he's, he's good at what he does. He's very good. I stand against everything he does, but he's, he's on another level to Nuttall. So I would worry if Nigel Farage gets back in as leader of UKIP. I don't know why the media still gives him this platform because he's not leader of UKIP anymore. He hasn't been for a long time. Yet you can't seem to get away from Nigel Farage. I, I hoped he would fade into irrelevance, but that just didn't happen because the media just wouldn't let it happen. Now he's rising again. So thanks media for that. Right, let's talk about Diane Abbott now. So um, Diane Abbott is a, a Labour MP. Um, she's a, a woman, she's a black woman. She's a black female politician. And God, the vitriol against Diane Abbott has been absolutely vile in this election. So basically what happened is she went on, uh, I'm not sure if it was a radio interview or the TV, and she messed up her figures. Now, yes, getting your figures wrong on TV or radio is a, a, a foolish move, it's unfortunate, it could be seen as unprofessional, it's a mistake. Obviously it's not a good thing to happen. But if you look at the disproportionate amount of hatred that Diane Abbott has got, you can't tell me that there's not racism and sexism involved in that. Involved in that. Because I mean, I'm on Twitter and I, I, I'm on, especially leading up to the election, I was on there a lot because I like to see what people are thinking, what people are saying about everything. Um, and some of it was just nasty sexism and racism, not even disguised towards Diane Abbott. And I think that a lot of people are, are too willing to let that go. I'm, I'm all for criticising a politician based on them not doing their job right. So if people are just saying Diane Abbott is a disgrace because she's got her figures wrong, I might say, you know what, humans do get that sort of thing wrong sometimes. Um, but at least that's based on, on what she did. But so much of it is, is so disproportionate. People saying she's incompetent. And it's an absolute joke because you've got people like Boris Johnson. The amount of times they put their foot in it, but they get away with it because it's it's funny somehow because they're they're white men. And it's it's just it's amusing. Oh, good old Boris putting his foot in it again, offending someone else. Um, yeah, I just think there's a real double standard. There was an incident in the campaign where Jeremy Corbyn was on Women's Hour and he needed time to find his figures. He was asked a specific question about figures and he didn't have them directly to hand, so he was looking to find them. And he was mocked ruthlessly for this. People were saying, oh, he can't even get his figures. But to me, it's just... So much of politics is a show now and it really bothers me because I want authenticity in politics. I want honest politics. I want, I would rather have have a, a politician who can say, do you know what, I don't have those figures on me right now, give me a second, I'll look and I'll be able to tell you what we plan to do. I would rather have that than someone who's just going to bluster and, and, and make things up. Now, I, to me, I feel like if there was fair reporting, I feel like Jeremy Corbyn would have been allowed to, to quickly find those figures and tell us, because surely what's important is not what uh, an individual uh, on the spur at the moment forgetting their figures, it's you know, what does this, this party want? What's the policy? What are they going to do for us? So surely, I don't understand why it wasn't more important that we let him get his figures so people could know what they were voting for and make up their mind by comparing it to the other parties. I don't know how that became drowned out by the fact that Jeremy Corbyn needed to take a couple of seconds to look on his iPad to find out. I'd, 
I just don't know. And I'm not saying that just because I'm a Labour supporter. I think the same with people on the right, because I, I've seen people in right wing parties mess their figures up and things before. And, and I just think, let humans be humans. Sometimes people on live TV will mess things up. That's not the issue for me, the issue is policy. Now one of the most horrible things that people have said about Jeremy Corbyn um, in the lead up to this election, and something the Tories used a lot, was saying that Jeremy Corbyn is a terrorist sympathiser somehow. Um, <laughs> it worries me a lot, this, this mentality, um, because I am ultimately interested in peace. I'm interested in a world where people aren't in danger and where we can come to some sort of agreement with different groups and, and people can be safe that's that's my main wish anyway that's that's what i think and basically um jeremy corbyn has in the past met with leaders of the ira or members of the ira now he met with these people in order to create a dialogue jeremy corbyn has always been someone that believes in peace he, he does not like the idea of nuclear weapons he always thinks that democracy and dialogue is the way forward and i personally agree with him so the Tories really ripped into him for that. And it, it's, it's ludicrous because now, after saying that, because purely because he wanted a dialogue with these people, the Tories are now actually forming a, an actual deal with the DUP, who have actual links to paramilitary groups. The hypocrisy there is, is mind-blowing because you're going to call Jeremy Corbyn a terrorist sympathiser for wanting a dialogue with the IRA. And yet you're actually, the Tories are actually now in a, in a deal with the DUP who not only hate gay people and, and don't want to respect the rights of women, but they also have major, major links to terrorism, like concrete links. And our government's got to deal with them right now. It makes no sense. Anyway, that was my video about the general election 2017. There's so much to say. There's so much that I could have said here, but I didn't. What a mess. What an absolute mess. And the money, the money that, that Theresa May spent on this election which basically it, it kind of it didn't make us any stronger it made us weaker it made us weaker i mean it's great if you're on the left it's great if you're labor it's great if you want to oppose the tories because we have a strong opposition now but i feel like Theresa may went into this to try and make us stronger for a hard brexit deal and now she's sort of people don't even know if she's going to be able to remain in power now people are saying that the tories are going to turn on her and and someone like Boris Johnson, God help us, might take over. So who knows? But um, that's politics for you. I, I do have hope. I do see hope in what's happened. I think there's a, there's a lot of people who support socialism and I feel a change coming. I, I really respect um, Jeremy Corbyn's way of doing politics and I hope that that impacts uh, elections and campaigns in the future. I, I think that we don't need to attack people personally. I don't like that nastiness in an election. I think it should be based on policy and hope and what you want for the country, not tearing other people down. So anyway, yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Um, obviously, you don't have to agree with what, what I've said here. I completely respect your opinion, even if you think the absolute opposite to me. Um, again, tell me what you think in the comments section. I will read it. And um, yeah, but I think we can all agree it's a bit of a mess right now, no matter where we stand politically. So I love you loads. I'll see you really soon. Bye.